Well, I'm not really sure actually how to use the apps analysis yet. Um, I was playing with it. I was trying to find it in the manual. Um, it, it says that it allows you to click on the device icon and show all apps traffic by. So let me click on the device icon. Oh, check that out. So it does seem that it's uh, letting me look at the different uh, traffic things that my computer is using. Um, what else is using some traffic here? Wow, it gets all the way down to Google Chrome and what Chrome is using versus General, which it looks like I should be able to prioritize. Let me get in here and turn on, uh, let's turn BitTorrent on highest. Come on, stop moving around. Okay, so you can't quite prioritize the individual things, unfortunately. There's a little too much to ask from a consumer grade router, I believe. But that is pretty cool that it lets you dive into that. Web history. Check that out. People have been on Tumblr today. Data flurry. Data.flurry.com. Don't want I'm not sure what that is. I'll have to look that up. US my D link. And that's uh, oh Nest. Our Nest is connected to something. Cool. So that's quality of service and how you turn that on. Let's run our speed test again with that on and just see what we get here. Remember we had 922, 61. Let me run another one and see what we come up with. It's true I could probably get something faster out of Safari because it's 64 bit. Notice that my speeds are, they may be being prioritized, but there's not really anything else running higher than this right now. Um, not much is on the network that's utilizing some of the higher priority services. So I'm getting about 700. That's about 220 down from what I was getting before, which upload is where it really sucks. Uh, 600. Well, actually, it's differing slightly from what it did the other day. I was only getting about um, 500 over the wireless before, or over the upload. 800. Okay, so it seems like upload is not affected nearly as much as download. It looks like it must be prioritizing other stuff on the download. Upload is 797 and download is 705. We've chosen to keep quality of service off, although I am tempted to turn it back on because I think I'll survive with these speeds. Um, sarcasm. But it's we were having some other issues with people saying the network was slow on the 2.4 gigahertz, which we thought was interesting because um, even with quality of service, it shouldn't be slow. I mean, these devices that are, uh, let's say that I give um, medium priority to everybody else, if it's empty, I don't know how it prioritizes empty versus, um, yeah, it looks like Sierra's iPhone is on Tumblr. That must be the one. I don't know how it prioritizes empty versus, um, like one of the ratings. My guess is, let me just put medium. Hey, interesting. So it won't actually let me prioritize anymore. My guess is I'm doing it wrong. There's probably some other way you uh, are supposed to do that now. But before it would let me, when it's turned off, I can actually grab this and um, drag it. So I'm not sure if that's a bug or if that's a feature. It will remain to be seen there. USB application, I'm just going to breeze over this. This is the AI disk. It allows you to share files in the USB disk through the internet. This is just through your DDNS uh, server center, set up UPnP, iTunes, FTP, and network place. Switch to USB mode to use a 3G, 4G wireless dongle or Android phone as a USB modem. Uh, let's hope you don't have any data limits because if you're putting that out to the entire uh, uh, wireless community around you, that could drop quickly. AI Cloud is just where you see your cloud disk, your smart access. This is if you want to see stuff on your phone. I don't use any of that just because a lot of it's proprietary and the apps aren't as updated as they should be, so I just use Dropbox and that kind of thing. But you could use your cloud disk for that. Smart Sync, etc. These are all the different cloud services by Asus. Let's go into some of the advanced settings briefly. Notice here I can see um, all the different frequency and wireless mode. I can even optimize it for the Xbox. If you're buying this as a gaming router, um, ba bandwidth, your channel control. I choose auto for most of it just because I believe that it knows what it's doing even though it's an early firmware. We'll see if that's true. Wi-Fi protected setup. 
Actually, that should be on. I'm not sure why it's off. I think it was off because I had initially hid the SSID. If you hide your SSID, it won't let you use Wi-Fi protected setup, obviously, because you can't find anything. Um, and the pin code and whatnot, you can uh, do push button for Wi-Fi protected setup, or you can actually do client pin code, etc., and add things from here. The uh, wireless bridge, you can actually turn this into a bridge if you want. Um, just be an accent. Wireless distribution system allows your AT, or, sorry, RT ACE 87R to connect as an access point wirelessly. Also, a repeater router. That's cool if you want to do that. Mac filtering, if you want to turn Mac filtering on. Professional. Actually, this is where it's pretty neat. That gives me some uh, features that relate more similarly to uh, some of the more professional stuff we use in enterprise grade routers. Now, it is cool in the enterprise grade that there's uh, four radios and the ones we use that we paid $500 a piece for from Fortinet, and you can have unlimited SSIDs. It's really pretty cool. Not unlimited. I think it's like 500 SSIDs active at a time. Um, but for consumer grade, this is a lot of features. They, uh, they have a lot of features here that you wouldn't see ordinarily. Enable radio, enable wireless schedule. You can turn the schedule. Um, I probably just want to turn the schedule off. I'm not sure why that's on by default, but I'm actually going to turn that off. Um, you can do roaming assist uh, if you want to have multiple access points. It just kind of um, it disconnects. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You can read up on that more if you want. Enable IGMP snooping. Um, disabled DTM interval. DTIM delivery traffic indication messages packet of the beacon blah blah blah. So it's pretty cool. It gives you some uh, the 80211 AC beam forming. This was, I think, exclusive to the AC87R. Although don't again, don't quote me on that. I saw that on the box. Um, I could get more into this and why this stuff is useful um, for the purpose of this video. It's not relevant. It's cool that you can adjust the uh, power adjustment though on this. You can apply all that. So I'm actually gonna hit apply on that. Goes through and updates 100% complete. Going to my LAN now. You can set your IP address here and your subnet, all that good stuff. DHCP server, what IP addresses you want to lend out, lease time, etc. default gateway. DNS, if you want to manually specify DNS. I like to set Google DNS just because Google knows what they're doing with that, although several other people do too, so that's fine. Route, enable static routes, yes, no. Um, if you know anything about networking, this is really helpful if you want to manually specify static routes to different, uh, I don't know if this can do tunneling or not, but uh, you would need that. Um, IPTV, interesting. This is apparently unique to um, certain fiber providers. I'm surprised that they included this. This is Maxis, Singtel, Unifi, etc. Et um, I don't have IPTV, so I'm not going to worry about that. But if you do have that, there's a whole section for it. Switch control. Enable jumbo frame, disable net acceleration level 2. If you know anything about advanced networking, these will be useful. If not, don't mess with them. Wireless, uh, WAN, wide area network. Um, this gives you your uh, your settings, your NAT, your UPnP. Interesting. I did not know UPnP was on. Um, Usually if this overrides port forwarding, the Netgear would not allow us to use UPnP and port forwarding at the same time. Um, I don't know, I haven't messed with this enough to know if that's an issue or if you can, you can do that, but we are using port forwarding and it does seem to work. So, um, Actually, uh, I don't know, I think I'm going to turn it off because a lot of these devices, Universal Plug and Play uh, gives port forwarding to anything that requests it. And we have several media servers that are all going to request the same port. So I'm going to turn that off because we manually specify that in port forwarding. WAN DNS settings, connect to the DNS server automatically, authentication, account settings. You can actually do a WAN account authentication on this thing. It's pretty cool. If you have host name and MAC address requirements from your ISP, you can set that here. You can do a MAC clone, which is neat. Apply 2040, 60, and then you're moving on. Dual wired area network or wide area network. I haven't seen that before. Um, this is uh, dual support allows failover to use a secondary WAN for backup network access, like load balancing and optimize bandwidth, minimize response time, and prevent data overload for the WAN connections. Do 
devices require unrestricted access to the internet. So you can do that there. This is my port forwarding here. Um, I'm blocking some of these out, but just for forwarding Plex and SIP through, we have that set up. It's pretty straightforward to do that. DMZ, it actually allows you to set up a DMZ, which is cool. Registration is successful. Oh, good. It's still registering me at asus.com. NAT pass through um, allows you uh, allows a virtual private network connection to pass through the net to the network clients. That's pretty neat if you want to allow some NAT pass through there. IPv6, IPv6 configuration. If you want to turn that on, we're not going to. VPN server. If you want to set up a VPN, it's pretty neat. It's, it will set up a. Uh, I believe it's PPTP. But uh, yeah, PPTP. I don't know. Think you can do IPsec. It's not a Cisco. So let's go to firewall. You can actually enable the firewall now. Service protection uh, that is off by default. You can turn that on. Don't know how much that would uh, um, limit you. Respond ping request from when? I'm actually going to turn that on. Please don't take forever to do that. Twenty forty. There we go. URL filter is um, next thing we're going to look at, which is if you want to actually do filtering by URL and block stuff, you can do that. Keyword filter if you want to do kind of your own specified parental control. Network service filter. Blocks the LAN to WAN packets exchange restricted and restricts devices from using specified network services. So this is just basic firewall stuff. You can turn that on if you want to restrict certain things, blacklist, whitelist, etc. Um, IPs, etc. Ranges. Administration of the router. RC87R supports several operation modes to meet different requirements. You can do wireless router mode, which we chose. You can do access point mode if you want to just create an access point and you're not doing any of the firewalling stuff. And the media bridge, which if you just have a media server you want to use the media bridge, you can do that as well, but we're not going to. The system is where you set your admin and password and all that good stuff, your time zone. Time authentication method. Now, I chose to enable HTTPS. I wanted some security here. It does actually set the um, uh, port to 8443. Um, if you don't remember that, that's pretty difficult. If you can remember it, you can get into your router. Otherwise, you have to reset it. Enable web access from wire, um, wide area network, no. And auto log out 30 minutes. I you can change this. I'd actually like that to be 555 I'm very insecure about that. I mean, my computer automatically locks when I walk away from it. So, a lot of only specified IP addresses. You can do filtering if you want to do that. Um, we've talked about firmware upgrade back in the beginning. That's where um, you check for latest firmware. We're expecting one this week, from what I understand. We're also expecting another set they've that they're already planning on for a couple weeks from now. So we should see some firmware upgrades here that will improve some of the reliability and speed and whatnot. We have had some drop connections, but not many. Um, probably no more than we were having with the R7000 on a stable firmware. So I'm pretty happy with the ASUS so far. If you want to back up and restore your settings, you can do that here. I do like the adaptive quality of service a little bit. Um, I'll have to play with this more once we actually have a manual. But uh, once we have a manual, I'll play with this a little bit more and see um, how this might be useful. Maybe after we get some updates, some more of these features will work better. Okay, so it looks like now you can, for some reason it wasn't letting me before, um, um, do that. But I'm going to go through and put our cameras in the lowest priority. Um, and yeah, that's pretty cool. So it gives you some options. I like that quite a bit. I'll hit apply here and see what happens. Line 20, 40, 60, 80. And we're set. So that's just that simple messing with the Asus uh, AC87R. Overall, a very good router. Yeah, this is the demonstration video of. Uh, First look at the dashboard panel for the brand new ASUS AC2400, which is the RT AC87R. Thanks for watching.